Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, and I'm going to try something new with my Nail the Shot series today, and I'm hoping you'll give me your feedback. If you've seen my other Nail the Shot videos, you know that these videos tell the backstory of my photos. In the past, I did these with eight images, but to even get just the essentials out, it was tough to keep those videos under 30 minutes, and I always felt like this was a little long, and the viewership seemed to reflect that. So I want to try this as more of a short format video series. My plan is to put out maybe about two of these a month with just a single photo and as before, talk about how I got the shot, what settings I used and why, as well as the field techniques used to overcome any challenges. I feel like it's more fun and digestible that way. Of course, this is going to be in addition to my normal videos and there are a lot of those in the pipeline now that I'm wrapping up my Z9 setup guide. So think of this video as sort of a test run and please let me know what you think in the comments or just give it a like if you think it all works really well. So for this video, we're going to use this shot and it's a reddish egret kind of in a dance pose as he's hunting for fish. This was taken at Fort DeSoto Beach in Florida and it was one of those evenings where there really wasn't much going on. We were kind of walking around, didn't really see much and then fortunately this guy flies in and I'd spotted this guy a few times before when we were there because he's very distinctive. Most reddish egrets are basically have that reddish head and they're gray. The rest of the body is gray. In this case, if you notice, there's a lot of white going on here. Now you can get these where they're full white morpher that's just completely white. But in this case, he's kind of somewhere between a regular one and a white morph. So it was really, really cool to see him. He's very unique. I've never seen one like this. So I was thrilled when I saw this guy fly into a lagoon kind of back behind the North Beach. So when I saw him there, he was in a good spot and I noticed the background was a little bit distant. Everything was kind of coming together and I knew I wanted to get low, but I had to get there first. So I made sure that I was very careful on my approach. Even when you have habituated birds, sometimes if you just rush up to them, they're going to fly off. So you don't want to do that. You still want to take a careful approach and make sure you're not upsetting him. So I got in as close as I needed to with my 600 and what I really wanted though was a low angle shot, lower than what I could get just kneeling. Now, unfortunately the ground was all kind of green mucky and I didn't want to lay in that. So I thought, let's do this. We have a Z9, right? Let's use that flip screen and we have PDAF, phase detection AF right on the sensor. So really good autofocus. So what I did is I flipped out the view screen and I put the camera all the way down. So the camera's basically just like on the sand, just above the sand. I'm just kind of holding it there. And what I did is I went to the auto AF area and I use subject detection. And the reason for that is that I wanted to be able to focus on the composition and I was going to let the camera kind of chase his head around. Now, anytime you have a reddish egret hunting like this, they're all over the place. Their head's here, their head's there, their wings are up, the wings are down because they're trying to kick up fish and they're using their wings to kind of cover the water so they can see through the reflection. So you really have to take all of this into account. And I know from past experience, trying to keep like a single AF point on the head as he's doing this is very difficult. So I thought, let's give subject detection a try. And it worked out really well. So as he was jumping around, the camera would try to follow his head and neck. And sometimes it would lose it. You know, it's kind of tough when you have a bird acting like that. And long neck birds are a little bit difficult for any subject detection system to kind of stay right on the head and the eye there. But the Z9 did a pretty decent job. It didn't get them all, but it did better, I think, than I could have do, trying to do it manually. Plus, I was filling the frame pretty well with them. So a lot of times it was all I could do to keep from clipping wings as I was looking down at that LCD panel and trying to follow along with the bird, you know, kind of hanging onto the lens and the camera. So, but overall it worked out pretty well. But there are a couple of tips here that I want to throw in. The first, of course, is you want to get nice and low with any subject. I think that always makes a big impression. You don't have to do it every time, but it just, I think it makes it so, so much more intimate. You feel like you're so much more involved with the subject. The other thing with this shot is my choice of autofocus and subject detection. Now, here's the thing. There's a couple of hints here. One thing is when you're using the auto AF area, basically the camera can cover the entire viewfinder. This is the equivalent to wide in Sony, but Nikon calls it auto and it can cover the viewfinder, it can go wherever it wants. So you have to do a couple of things to make sure it works right. The first thing is you want to pick a composition where it's basically the subject more or less isolated. If you notice in this photo, we don't have a lot of stuff in the foreground. There's not a lot of stuff in the background. At least the background's not close to the subject. So it makes it easier for the camera to understand what the subject is. It's not going to accidentally jump to the foreground or background. The other trick is to manually focus Focus the lens at about the distance of the subject. Because here's the trick with subject detection. It works really well 
if it can see a subject. But if that subject is totally out of focus, the camera is going to use its normal AF method, in this case auto AF, and it might very well grab onto the foreground before focus ever reaches where the subject is, where it can say, oh gee, that's an actual subject there, I should be locking onto that. So it's critical in situations like this to make sure you're kind of pre-focused at the distance of the subject. And as the camera would lose focus or whatever, I would go back and I would refocus to kind of keep it in that range. It really drives up your success rate. Now, as far as shutter speeds and things like that, uh, I was at 1 of a second, which seems a little fast because he's not really in flight. But the problem is he is jerking around so much, his head's moving so much, his wings are flapping, and you want to freeze that motion, especially in the head. You don't want that head blurry. And he was also fishing, so sometimes he would catch a fish, throw it up in the air, and you want to catch those kind of moments too. So... That's why we have 3200th of a second. As far as metering, I was manual with auto ISO and I dialed in one stop of negative exposure compensation because the background was a little bit on the dark side. There's a lot of shadowy areas there. There's a lot of darker tonalities and the camera wanted to overexpose the bird. But once I had that minus one dialed in, he wasn't really changing backgrounds or anything. So camera exposed everything perfectly fine. So it worked out really, really well from that standpoint. And finally for metering, I was just using plain old matrix metering. Once I got back to the computer, I did just a little tiny bit of cropping, nothing too major so this is almost a full frame shot and uh, used a little topaz denoise to clean up what little noise there was at ISO 1250 and uh, kind of finished it off in Lightroom. So there you have it. I'd love to hear your feedback on this shorter format. As always, remember that I have a ton of educational materials in the form of eBooks and video workshops that are all designed with the sole purpose of helping you take your photography to the next level. Also, remember that I do more than just videos and the best way to keep up with what's going on is through my free email newsletter. Sign up at the site today. I'll be releasing my Z9 Wildlife Setup Guide pretty soon and that newsletter is where it's going to be announced. Finally, I'd love it if you'd like, subscribe, and get notified. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.